Good evening, church. Such a privilege to be here with you in the evening. Thank you that you allow, allow older people uh, in your service in the evening. Thank you so much for that. Um, so, yes, we are in the middle, like I could say, in our miracle series starting today, uh, one of five. And we're going to unpack what Jesus did on earth um, to get not only the recognition, but the glory of the things that he moved through. But uh, before we read the scripture, let's pray for it. Father God, thank you that we can pray over your word. I pray that you bless this piece of scripture, uh, that we also um, do, do, do the diligence in reading the, for, the four part of it and then afterwards as well. Not only just the scripture, but your word, that we will not only read it, but believe it, that we are not believe it, Father God, but we move into action uh, where your miracles can can follow. And we pray that in Jesus' name for everyone here. Amen and amen. Okay, say with me, let him be known. Yes, okay, we're going to say it louder later. But ultimately, uh, yes, uh, um, today I'm married to Catherine uh, Alice I is for, 20, oh, for 19 years, almost 20 years next year. Uh, and so um, it's such a great privilege to be in, um, in a relationship like that. Uh, but it is tough. Who can, who's married here? Anyone? Uh, it's not easy sometimes. I don't understand women. And I think Catherine goes, who on earth is this dude that is sleeping next to me for almost 20 years? I still don't know why he acts the way he does. And so I'm just very glad that, that Catherine has kept all of these years out for me. It's beautiful. It's lovely. But then I do also a lot of weddings, like you know. Um, and so I brought a couple of pictures that we're going to go through. The first picture... Uh, is when Catherine got out of the car 19 years back today. Uh, it was raining. Oh, she looks so pretty, eh? And then when she walked in, uh, in the church, she had like a Roy Kapi Kapi on, but it was white, and I couldn't see her, and it was beautiful. I cried. And so the next one, uh, there was a lot of kissing at this wedding. It was beautiful. We kissed. We made out. It's lovely. It was because the, 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 um, uh, the photographer said we should, and those days we were kissing is a good thing, so um, dirty dancing, all of those things. Okay, great. And the next one is like a hands one. Uh, it's always very classic. Uh, I don't have that ring anymore. I'll tell you that story later. And then there is this photo where people will phone. <laughs> it's Sebastian. Where people will phone me and go. How were you allowed to get married at 17? Okay. And so I think the suit was a bit too big. Oh, but she was lovely. I could not take my eyes off of her. And even today, I look at her and she goes, no, man, don't look at me that way. And she thinks I just want to, her to make me coffee. Okay. And so um, uh, the next one is, again, a kissing photo. It was lovely. We kissed a lot. And there she was tired. Can you see? She's not list for that kiss, say. Eh? And so the next one then. It was really in the, um, it was really a murder, what's that, um, fashion to have half of your face taken and you pay someone to take just the half of your face. And so there's one of Catherine, she's pretty, and then there's one of me, I was still happy then, I mean, it's beautiful. And then this last one, it's such an incredible photo for me because this photo is in my office at home where we do our prepping for couples or when I prep for sermons like this, it's always there. I look like a boy child. But then this moment where Catherine sort of rests and she's, she's given over a lot. And she rests on my shoulder in this picture where she trusts me to just be her husband. And, and it puts so much pressure on me, but also the knowledge that I have that I can protect her and love her and I just love this picture. She is a feisty one. I just want to tell you. Um, you say right, she says left. You say up, she says down. And just we do I want a happy marriage, you say yes to the left and yes to the down. Okay. But ultimately, leading a woman in, in today's world that we're living in uh, is, is not easy, but marriage is not easy. Uh, but the incredible part of back, coming back to our miracle series is I'm going to take you right into a moment like that, that, like that photo with two young people. Now, I don't know if you know, but when they married in those days, they were literally children. Hmm? Yeah, like, exactly. Uh, young, not after the 
beautiful children getting married, and we go, oh, that's not right, eh? Yeah. But they were really young in those days because um, they were introduced by their families. There was a culture of community that was spoken right into that marriage. It wasn't just our fallen in love. And uh, uh, what, is that, uh, um, uh, what is that Taylor Swift song? Um, Romeo, say me, I can want to be alone. I'll be waiting. Okay, that one. And so it's not just, uh, it's a love story and baby, we say this. No, no. It was a community decision for two young people to get married. The parents agreed upon that. And then sometimes that bride only met her husband that day. Eat on that. Think about that. How romantic is that, babe, right there? Not as romantic as Rolf, huh? I'm hearing it from the side here, it is. But let's read this scripture that I think you know really well. Let's get into it, John 2, verse 1 to 11. On the third day, there was a wedding at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. So interestingly enough, this is the first time the Bible refers to Mary as the mother of Jesus. The very first time. And he does that on purpose, and we'll get to that just now. Uh, verse 2, Jesus was also invited to the wedding with his disciples. Now, to set this up straight, we think that Jesus knew the couple really well because he grew up with them. And they, they know that it was a family wedding. It was people that they knew. And so Jesus was invited with his disciples, saying that everyone that was there was community-based. They said yes to this wedding. Have you been to a wedding before that you invited? Then you go, these two should not be married. That's bad, isn't it? But the community helped them to understand. But Jesus is here, invited to a wedding. He's not doing anything. If Jesus was invited to my wedding, he would preach. I mean, okay. But ultimately, they didn't even think of Jesus in that way. He was just there for the food and the drink and the amens. And in those days... I want to tell you, they'll get to that now. Jesus also was invited to wedding with his disciples when the wine ran out. Gepje, did the wine run out? Thank you, for that. And so it ran out, and the mother of Jesus said to him, so not Mary, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. Now, Jesus was invited. He had no responsibilities whatsoever. And his mother comes in and says, Jesus, no wine. Now, with someone with no responsibility, and if you come to me and give me responsibility and trying to help me in that moment to understand, it's all on me. I go, it's not, not my circus, not my monkeys, eh? And so not my responsibility. And exactly the way Jesus responds to her. Listen to his, he says, he says, and Jesus said to her, woman, what does this have to do with me? Is that arrogant or ugly? No, this, he's like, dude, he's like, um, so I want to tell you a funny thing. So our boy Sebastian, 12 years old, started to call my wife, bruh. So she goes with me. She goes, pause, we're going to go on just now. She goes, I was his mommy when he started to talk. He said, mama. Then I was ma later. Then I was the one that gave birth to him. So there was a season where Sebastian called her the one that gave birth to me. Now she's bra, and she cannot understand it. At least Jesus didn't say bra. Okay, and so, he's, woman, <laughs> they have no wine. Jesus said to her, woman, what does this have to do with me? Literally, question mark. My hour has not yet come. Now, for this woman, this mother of Jesus, to understand, I want you to understand the miracle that she carried for 30 years back was the miracle of age where a woman got pregnant, got impregnated by the Spirit of God. It's never happened before. She knows this man that was that baby 30 years back is not here. And it was what wasn't the last time he did a miracle when he got born through her. She knew something's on its way. And at this moment, I don't know if you know, but this will be the first miracle that Jesus did at a wedding. What was it? Water into wine. I'm not here for tricks. I'm not going to do that tonight, okay? We'll try it later. If it doesn't work, it's not on me, okay? But ultimately, when Jesus comes and he answers her, my hour has not yet come. It's not because he's not ready. It's not because Jesus is saying no. 
It's because there is faith in his mother's heart in knowing the miracles are coming. It should be now. She's been waiting for 30 years after his birth to see it coming to, to, in, into pass. And, and, and here's the thing. I, I want you to understand we have to have the same faith. She's built 30 years of relationship with her boy. Sometimes I call my mother. And I am not rude to her. I'm just straight. Uh, it's a tough day at work. And she goes, listen, Maniki, uh, I know you too well. You don't speak to me in that manner. Change your head quickly. And then I have to change my head. I say, sorry, Ma. And then I speak to her later. She knows me really well. She knew Jesus well. There was authority there. Now, listen to what happens. He says, uh, he says, my hour has not come. His mother said to the servants, now listen to this. She knows. She's not even saying Yes. She's ordering the servants. And she says this. The mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now, if Mary was out of line, the mother of Jesus was out of line, she would have said, go and do this because I am ordering you to. Not a, she's not saying that. She is saying, do whatever Jesus tells you to do. She is showing the servants to Jesus, the miracle maker. Sometimes you and I have authority with God. We have a relationship. We've got background. We think we're there. And then when, when we expect things of God, we expect us to get the glory. We expect us to receive something, a tap on the shoulder or whatever. But not even the mother of Jesus was that arrogant. She went, if, you, if I tell you what to do, but you tell you. Do everything that man, that man tells you to do. It shows to Jesus. It's, make, it's, it's making him known. And what's interesting is she's telling the, the servants, now there were six stone water jars, therefore the Jewish rites of purification. This is interesting. Uh, it's so funny because the, those jars was not allowed to be used for anything else except the purification. And Jesus calls on those religious moments and he says, bring that. We're going to use that now. I love when Jesus works against religion. I love it when he shakes it. He knocks it on the teeth or maybe on the nose. It bleeds. Why? Because sometimes we as people come in and we put in place rules that's not godly. It's not from Christ. And it hurts people. I mean. And so he does that. He brings the jars. Jesus said to the servants, now he's speaking. He hasn't said yes. He's just moving in it. He knows. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the feast. So they took it. Now, I don't know if you know the process of wine, but it is a long process. To get to good red wine, it takes about 20 years. So you plant a seed, there's fruit, you harvest that fruit. You step on it, you bring the family, it's in a big round thing, they get the juices out of there, they ferment it, they put a, a, a water in it. Now their wine wasn't as strong as ours today, the Word of God says, it's been mixed with water. But ultimately, when it's made, it ferments and then it lies down, it stands for a very long time. Jesus did this in a moment. I want to tell you now, when Jesus moves in your life, in someone else's life, He changes it right away. It will never be the same again. If, your faith, if you have a faith-based focus on Jesus, you will know that when he moves, things change. We don't wait for it. When he speaks, no one waits. When we order him, he says, okay, let's see how long you can wait. Sometimes we need to be in line, in tune with how God does things. But this is amazing because he says, now draw some out of it and take it to the master of the feast. It happens in a moment. So they took it. And when the master of the feast tasted the water, now become wine, and did not know where it came from. All of those barrels, no one brought it in. It wasn't a trick. Now, remember again, there were a lot of tricksters in those days, tricking people because they wanted money. Even people saying they love God tricked people for money. So this is a big moment. Where did the wine come from? Though the servants who had drawn the water knew. How interesting is this? Jesus did not decide to do his first miracle in front of influential people. 
He did it in front of servants. Are you a servant? Are you serving Jesus? See, there's two things that Mary did, the mother of Jesus did right. She shown the servants to Jesus. And then she said, believe him. Those two things. We sang it just now in that song. Believe in God. My favorite verses currently is that John 1, where Jesus said that if your heart is troubled, believe in God, believe also in me. He's not saying, he's not even saying, hey, um, I see you're in trouble. Uh, do you need some finances? He says, he's, he looks at you and he says, uh, I see you're sick. Uh, let me heal you. He, say, he doesn't say that. He doesn't say, let's go for a, a session of, a, um, of ministry somewhere for 12 weeks. No, no. He says this. If your heart is troubled, believe in God, believe also in me. If you want to heal your heart, believe. Sounds like a cop out, but it's not. God is calling out the faith out of us. Why? Because we're in a generation where if you don't see it, we don't believe it. Amen? God is calling us to full faith. You have to move in it before you see it, and then it will come to pass. Amen? And so he says this. When the master of the, okay, we will pass that. The master of the, feast, of the feast called the bridegroom. Now, here's the thing when I do weddings and preparation. It's ultimately very well known that if the wine or the food ran out at a wedding like that. Now, the feast, they did almost a half a day. For the procession, like we marry people, that moment, you are worried about an hour in the church. They did it off a day. And then they had a party for six days afterwards, all in all, seven days for a wedding. Now, if you calculate it well, and you and in your sphere of influence and friends, people are getting married, you can go to your boss and say, I'm seeing you next year. I have weddings this year. I'm just going on weddings. Okay, 15 weddings, 15 weeks, maybe. It's going to be beautiful. So it didn't work like ours, quickly, uh, all done in one day. But the wine ran out, and the shamefulness was not on anyone else except the groom and the bride. In those days, it was shameful when the, when the food and the, and the drink ran out. The couples were shamed. Not a great way to start your marriage. And here's one of the things that happened is, is Jesus uses water into wine. But where do we see that analogy uh, when we read the scriptures later uh, on the cross? When, when Jesus is pierced in his side, what, what is released? Water and blood, the showing of what's to come. Jesus is doing his first miracle, directly showing to the cross of Jesus, of his own cross, for his own death. He is stepping in uh, uh, between them and saying, I will not let you be ashamed, not on my watch. And so, what God does is, we don't only trust the Lord for breakthrough and miracles and signs and wonders. We trust Him that He's the buffer. Wherever we need Him, we call on Him. We submit under Him. Our lives are put down, and whatever we think is more important is not. We're laying our lives down to Jesus, saying, Lord, You are our Lord. We will make you known, and whatever happens, I will be okay with it. You know that a servant op operates that way. doesn't matter what the outcome is of what I asked. If, this, if the Lord decides, the servant submits. Sometimes we get arrogant with Jesus. Sometimes we get frustrated with the Spirit. Sometimes we, we're not so happy with the Father because we're not getting what we want. Oh, but if we know that we submit like a servant and we do everything that he tells us, the miracles will come because of our relationship with, 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 with the, the Lord Jesus. If you and I can be more servant oriented, And so here he comes. He says, everyone serves the good wine first. Goes to the bridegroom and said this. Everyone serves the good wine first and the people have drunk freely. Then the poor wine. But you have kept the good wine until now. I don't know if you know, but there's a correlation in every book of the Bible, Old Testament and New. The whole Old Testament uh, shows to Jesus a thin golden line uh, of knowledge that we know there is a Savior coming. The prophets say, saying it. Abraham saying it. Um, David is singing about it. But ultimately, it's almost like in the Bible, Jesus, Jesus was the good one in the New Testament. 
And so the, 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 what he's saying is the, the best is still yet to come. You and I need to trust in the Lord. We need to believe in God and Jesus. And then there's a funny thing. I heard someone say in the week we were praying over a situation at a friend's house. And the lady goes, but my God doesn't work this way. My God will make everything go well when I believe in Him. But that's not true, is it? He will make His plans work out well. But will it always go well with me? No, no, it is just well with my soul, isn't it, Jaku? He's never saying it'll be an easy path. He's never saying there won't be any trouble. He never said you won't have tri trials and tribulations. Actually, the Bible warns us, saying because you believe in Jesus, you will have trouble. You will have trials. You will have tribulation. But when I will be with you. Make sense? Oh, this is so rich. I'm so excited for you. I'm so excited for me. There's something happening in our spirits where God is awakening us because it's not all about us, is it? It's about Him. And so He says, This, the first of, Jesus, of, of, the, of, of His signs, Jesus did at Cana in Galilee and manifested His glory. And His disciples believe, believed in Him. Listen, Jesus didn't just do this first miracle um, to show off. There were only like four or five uh, of his disciples already chosen at that stage. It wasn't a full 12. They, they were still wondering why this rabbi called them into ministry. Why are they following him? And that moment when that happened, Jesus started small. It wasn't for the crowds. He, he knew the servants of that wedding knew. He knew the master of that wedding knew. And then the word says, and his disciples believed in him. If you are willing to see the goodness of God in your life, it's not only when every nation calls on a year of miracles that miracles happen or a month of miracles in our, in our sermon series. No, God has been doing miracles last year, December. He did miracles last year, November. He did miracles the whole 22. He did it in 21. He did it in 2020. God's been doing miracles everywhere. What I am calling you to is, can you see what God is doing? Because if our eyes are on the world, we will not see those miracles. If your eyes are on the things that you don't have, you won't see the miracles. If your eyes is on Jesus, you will be able to see in that relationship the goodness of God. And you'll start worshiping Him for the right reasons. You'll start following Him for the right reasons. You'll start abiding in Him. You'll be obedient to the Word of God like the servants were. And what happened? They saw the miracle. Do you know some people will taste the miracle that they have not seen? They'll be able to enjoy some of it. But they weren't there. I want you to be in the moment. I want you to be there. I want you to see. I want you to serve. I want you to ask Jesus, where is it where I can be at, where you can work through me? Thank you, Yaku. So why miracles? I just told you why. Next question. So there's a moment where Jesus heals 10 lepers. Am I saying that right? Yeah, yeah, it's lepers, yeah. Not lepers. Jesus healing the 10 lepers. Now, what is interesting about the story, you know it well, uh, ten lepers comes to Jesus. They're not allowed in the, in, in the city. They should, well, they should live outside at a, de a designated area. But what happens here is they come across Jesus. They have heard of this testimony of him doing miracles and signs and wonders. They come to him. They plead with him. And he heals all ten of them. I want to tell you, teach you something tonight. Not every miracle will turn into salvation. People will receive the goodness of God, and they'll still turn around and walk away. So Jesus says, go and show yourselves. One returns. Now, let's say, Yaku, oh no, let's say I'm the one that returned to thank Jesus. I would be thinking, if I was that aware in that moment, listen, their fingers were falling off. They had no toes. Some of them had no noses. And in an instant, Jesus did just like the water and wine. You can laugh about it, but it's true. 
They didn't have, they didn't have limbs anymore. They, uh, they were rotting from the inside. And in one moment, they got healed. How glad would you be? God touched you now in any healing. Say you have a cold and he heals you. Will you be glad? I'll be testifying. How much more of them? But then they leave. One returns. Jesus is not saying, hey, so glad. Just thank you for thanking me. Thank you for being. No, Jesus says to him, weren't there 10 of you? Where's the other nine? He gets a scolding. But here's the, here's the, the lesson tonight. Is we will see miracles. People, lost people will see miracles. Some will respond and some won't. Some will take the gift and they will run. Do you know what's interesting? There's always more with Jesus just after the miracle. There's depth there. There's relationship. There's lordship. There's friendship. There's everything that God has for us. But for some, even big miracles are just not enough. That's why we don't chase miracles. That's why I'm setting you up for this series that it's about miracles, but it's not. I am showing you to Jesus. I want you to make him known. I want him to, it to be all about him. I want your life to be a test, a walking testimony of what Jesus has done for you. And then the fruit of that, and there in between will be miracles. There in between will be moments of exclamation and glorious uh, uh, attendance where, where people can see God's goodness, but I'm warning you, even people seeing it won't believe it, and they will move away. Our work is to share the gospel of Jesus. Our work is to say there was a miracle. There is a man. There is a God. There is a, there is a Lord. I want you to meet him. That's why when we introduce lost people to Jesus, it's not on us when they say no. It's on Jesus. They're not rejecting you. They're rejecting him. So I have this thing. I'm almost finished. I have this. I read this. This art. I read this piece of um, uh, writing about how the church in those days. Do you know that that piece of scripture that goes that we shouldn't speak in tongues when we're together because of the fear of someone that may, might come in and, and, and all of that. And so I read this piece of scripture that, that was exegesing this, this piece where he said in those days that gathering of the church had no lost people in it. Paul warning us for not speaking in tongues in front in church wasn't because we're going to offend lost people. Yes, it is so. But the lost people were reached in the week. They were baptized in the week. And then they were added to the family on that day. So speaking in tongues wasn't even an issue. Why? Because they were obedient, getting, getting saved, getting baptized by water, and then getting baptized by the Holy Spirit. Will you be offended walking in here when you receive tongues? And when I speak in tongues, will you be then offended? No. You'll be offended when you're not saved, do not understand the, the, um, the, the baptism of water, and not understand the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Then you'll be offended. You'll go. You won't come back. In those days, church was for the saved. The gathering of that was for the saved people. You and I should understand that when we reach out to lost people, oh, please do baptize them in the week as well. You can. I'm not saying do not bring lost people to church. Please do. We're really accommodating to that. I'm not trying to chase anyone away. I'm trying to say the work was done in the week. And then when we come together, we celebrate those souls in Jesus' name. We celebrate the victories, the miracles, what God has done. The glory is to Jesus. But the work's been done in the week. We're not a Sunday-focused church. We will never be. If we ever get smoke machines, I will not be here anymore. I love smoke machines. I dance in it. I do moves with it. Not in church. Amen. I like lights as well. It's beautiful. We'll never get to that place where it's all, all just for entertainment value like Yaku mentioned. For me, I want to I wanna ask you this year, I want to ask you in this sermon series, do not miss next week. Yaku is going to uh, preach a powerful message of 
and, and I'm laying the foundation for you to understand it's not wrong to see the miracles or to believe it or to share it, but that's not what we are going to chase. We are going to chase the King of kings and the Lord of lords and the one who gave his life to us. And I want to end off saying to you that the biggest miracle was Jesus giving his own life to this world. And if you cannot be appreciative of that, then you will not understand obedience and then you will not stay here for very long. That was the gift of gifts. That was the miracle of miracles. It's Jesus overcoming death, being raised from the dead, and he's living today. That's our, that's our, that's our gospel. That's the love of Christ. And then, then, you know, I think a lot of other problems will, will fall off of us when we just believe in God, believe in him. I don't have anything else. God turns an embarrassing moment into an opportunity so that his power might be displayed. He responds to our call when we pray. Our problems require obedience. It's not just about the miracles. Our wedding day is on its way. Jesus is coming back for a pure bride, and I am part of it. Are you? Are you part of the servanthood of God? Are you part of serving Jesus to the point where you see the miracles and then you testify about Him? Even though it's done through you, it's not about you. And then the scripture I'm ending off, Mark 16, 17 to 18 says, And these signs will accompany those who believe. So God says, believe in God, believe in me, Jesus said. And these signs will accompany you. In the name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up serpents, serpents with their hands. And they will drink any deadly poison. It will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Do you want to see that happen? Believe in God, believe in Jesus. Let the Holy Spirit move through you. Amen? So there's two things for me. On your chair, you would see a pen, one of these uh, business cards that says one sermon series. Uh, one is open, blank on both sides. I want you to do two things for me. I want you to write a list of names at the back that you, someone that you know, friends, family, uh, colleagues, that you know that needs Jesus and you are trusting God for to save their lives. I don't care if it's through you or through anyone else. But you're going to pray for them until we see God save them. Amen? Write them right now. Write them down right now. Names. I need names. There might be a Philip. Write Philip down. I don't know. There might be a Yaku. He needs Jesus as well. Write it down. The ones that we're trusting Jesus for. I don't know. You might be a musician out there. There's a lot of lost musicians. You meet them. Lost producers. I don't know. BVs. Uh, the lead guitar players, I don't know. You write their names there. You might be um, working in, in, a, in corporate and you got a really bad, really, really worldly boss. Put his name on here. Trust God for big things. Can you see where our big focuses lie in miracles? We want to see the healings. We want to see God doing big things. We want to see God moving mountains. Amen? But we want to see, firstly, the lost coming to Christ, the biggest miracle of all. And then secondly, on this blank piece of paper, I want you to write in. You can number it. You can please don't put your name on there. The, th the big things that you are trusting, the miracles that you are trusting God for, for your life in 2023. I want you to write them down. We're going to fold them up before, before we do the communion. We're going to, you're going to uh, hang it on the miracle prayer board. We're going to pray over it. People are going to pray over that. Fill that, that, that paper in that list. Make a list right now. Things you are trusting God for, do not think small. Do not think right now. Think tomorrow. Think next year. Think big. You can have tomorrow things on you. Please do have generational things in mind as well. Write it down. I'm going to give you some time. Please put that uh, last slide up for me, Louis. Thank you so much.
No, it's just the previous one. No. Yes. While you're writing, I want to do a prayer. Keep on writing. I'm going to pray for you while you write. Lord, I pray right now that the scriptures will come alive in our spirits and our hearts over our congregation, over Eiffelt, over Centurion, over Pretoria, over South Africa, and the world, Lord. I pray right now they are in 80 for other countries. We are doing the same sermon series. Lord, I pray that you'll open our hearts to understand it's all about you. I pray that we will trust you for really big things in this world. But Lord, I'm praying for this, that your will will be done and not ours. Like Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, he prayed, Lord, your will, not mine. I want us to, to move these two stations, one in the front, one in the back. I want you to, to hang your miracle prayer list on there. There's going to be people praying over those things. And when it comes true, we're going to take it off, and you're going to have the opportunity to testify uh, about it in church, in your connect, um, online for us. We're going to trust God for big things. But I also want you to grab some um, communion um, elements. We are going to um, use communion together. We're going to trust God that he will bless you this year, work through you, protect you, but also that we will see his glory being manifested and his kingdom being established on earth. Amen? Let's do that now. Let's, we're going to have some background music. Um, let's move and let's minister. Keep on praying. Do not. This is not the end. I'm going to give it over to Yaku, but, but he's going to... Um, Help us through the communion right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's move. See, here's the thing. We can resist it, but then we won't see it, will we? It's when we believe and receive it. It's when it flows. Some of you here have an amazing ability and the gift of faith. Oh, you need to action it. You need to use it. You know, Lord, I'm not going to leave you until you bless this person or you bless me or you break through in this, in this uh, regard. Um, some of you are really under very big financial stress. I can feel it in the spirit. Worried, that's the word. If you're worried right now about job, work, income, finances, um, I want you to go, Lord, you see my iniquity. You see my shortcomings. You see what I need. But I choose to put my eyes on you. Say with me, I believe in God and I believe in you, Jesus. And that is enough for me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Can we give God a hand? Um, Marinas, thank you for uh, a good word and a good setup for the rest of the series. Are you guys expectant? So I want us to end with something practical. Um, and then we're going to go have coffee for the last time this week. <laughs> and then again next week, Sunday. Um, but who of you have never fasted before? All right, so if you go to highfell.online, there you get to access the prayer and fast manual. And there's instructions that helps you to understand how to fast. Now, if you are in a connect group, please speak to your connect group leader and say to them, I want to participate in this prayer and fast week. I want to fast with you. Um, and there's different ways that you can fast. You can full fast where you drink only water. You can fast certain aspects like certain meals. Um, but whatever way God leads you into fasting, but do not miss out. You see, when we fast, it's not just a we're sacrificing food or social media or whatever. It's you training your flesh also that what it really needs is Jesus. More than anything else, you need Jesus. Christ. He is the bread of life, nothing else. And when we fast, we're also training our flesh that it submits to God. When you fall into sin, it's because your flesh led the way, not the spirit. And when you fast, you are training your spirit. All right? So participate in the fast. Pray with us. We're praying Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday morning in person, six to seven year at Highfelt. And then Thursday and Friday is the evenings at Every Nation Park. Maybe not able to come to all of them, come to one of them. Um, 
maybe it's early, maybe you have to drive a little bit. Like Marina said the other day, we drive further for other stuff. I think Jesus is worthy of us getting on the N1 um, and drive somewhere. Um, but in Marina's message tonight, there was this beautiful moment where Jesus spoke to the servants. And what did they do? Whatever he told them to do. And then the result was the miracle. And ultimately that the, the bride couple was not, unash was not ashamed. But that ultimately so that Jesus will be glorified. So what I want us to end off with is that we're going to stand in service of Christ. And as you stand, you're saying, Jesus, I want to serve you. Just as they were servants for Jesus so that his glory could be revealed, in the same way you and I say, yes, Jesus, I want to stand as a servant. So I'm inviting you to stand with me in service to Christ. And then uh, Gepia said we're going to pray bold prayers. All right. So I'm, you're going to repeat after me. Lord Jesus, here is my life. You have all authority. You are Lord. I am your servant. Whatever you say, I will do. Use me. Send me. Shape me. Mold me for your glory. This week, let me hear your voice. And let me obey. Amen. If you can hear the voice of God and you will obey him, you will always be okay. So next week, Sunday, we're also starting for four weeks during our pre-service prayer, 4 to 4.30, right here, to teach you how to hear the voice of God. If you can hear the voice of God and you will obey him, you will be okay. God bless you guys. Really expectant for this week of prayer and fasting, and may we see God already do great things.